Before he was killed, Christian Albumseli documented a series of violent arguments with his OnlyFans girlfriend, who has since been charged with his murder. The defense maintains okay, she was a victim of domestic violence. Take a listen. You but you hit me. Shut the f up. By all accounts, Christian Abumseli and Courtney Clenny have had a very violent and toxic relationship. We shouldn't be together. Well, you can say that again, sister. And I would argue that if they had not been together, I do believe that his life would have been saved from this Instagram nightmare. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the damn sofa, and that's our little sidekick, Mr. Roscoe P. Coltrane, holding it down over there. And my name is Paul. Welcome back to the sofa. We've kept the cushions warm for you. Now, as you saw today, we're going to be reviewing the Instagram OnlyFans model case. This has been very tumultuous in that when it first came out, it was, you know, oh, this is a DV case, and, you know, some neighbors said this, and these people said that. But, however, when more and more of the information about this case started coming out, it has resulted in her arrest. She is right now awaiting, you know, trial on, or whatever's going to happen with the case, you know what I mean, uh, on charges of murdering her boyfriend. So what we're going to do today is this. They released, like, a four-hour interrogation. A lot of you have been asking me about this. I appreciate it. It's taken me a minute to go through it all. This could be a two-parter because literally I'm looking at my computer in front of me and I have so many clips that I put in to talk about and whatnot. So we're just going to see. So if you'll know it's a two-parter because I'll see in the damn thumbnail. Anyway, so that's how we're going to do it. And what we'll do is we'll put up a clip and I'll talk about it. If you do not want to hear my commentary on it, then this video is not for you. The link down below will link you to the entire interrogation where you can watch it without me. So just do whichever one that you want, whatever makes your little heart sing. And as always, thank you to everybody who makes the channel possible. Thank you to the Patreons, the members, everybody who's in the comment section, engaging, sharing, liking, and talking about the cases, keeping the victims' narratives and stories and names alive, and dissecting the monsters that steal their lives from them. Now also, let's make some room on the sofa for the sponsor that's also making this video and channel possible. Y'all welcome HelloFresh to the damn sofa. I don't know about y'all, but I've got a lot of New Year's goals and HelloFresh is here to help us achieve them. Get out of the post-holiday slump with these elevated winter classics. For today's video, I wanted to show another one of their super fast, super yummy lunch meals. HelloFresh always keeps it simple with easy to follow directions and portions that save you money and cut down on waste and also time in the grocery store. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up restaurant quality meals right in your own kitchen. And fast and fresh recipes, HelloFresh's latest line of meals feature robust flavors and filling portions, and they're ready in less than 15 minutes. Y'all, they have over 35 weekly recipes, so you have options. Whether you want to choose the calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, you can even upgrade proteins or add protein to a veggie dish. One thing I love about HelloFresh is they're all about customizing it to make it what you want want and need. And also, look, the ingredients travel from the farm to you in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. I wanted to show y'all the lunch that I made for today's video. It's the Chipotle chicken wraps. Y'all, they turned out amazing, and best of all, it's so easy to make. One thing I really love about these ready, set lunch recipes that they do is number one, they're fast, they're easy, the portions are just right, the taste is amazing. One thing that I love about it is I always take the extra serving, whether it's another portion, whatever it ends up being, and I will pack that to use for my lunch the next day. Sometimes I even end up eating it for dinner later that night. I love leftovers. I don't mind doubling up on something like that. That way I know I have something healthy for work or dinner, whatever the case may be be, right? HelloFresh makes that easy, and they also take the thought process out of that when I'm in the middle of going to work and everything's busy and crazy. I know what's in it, I know the calories, and I know it tastes good. So whether you're trying to stay on track with your goals, cook something awesome for your friends on that big game day, or just take control of your money, your diet, and your time, HelloFresh has you covered. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code REPORTINGLIVE for MySofa21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code REPORTINGLIVE for MySofa21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Okay, so be sure and check out all of their stuff. It's all down in the description below. And without further ado, 
let's review. Now, first, what I want to do is just watch a couple more clips just to kind of put us all on the same page. We're laying the foundation. Police were called to their luxury apartment on multiple occasions, including two days before they say she stabbed him to death. We asked her, I said, do you want him to leave the property? She said, no, she don't want him to I did not say that. I said Okay, yes. hold on. No, but so, hold on, he's talking, then you talk. You're looking at police body cam video from Friday, April 1st. One Paraiso building employees called Miami police in regards to a domestic disturbance between OnlyFans model Courtney Clenny and her boyfriend Christian Abumselli. Okay, so now as you see in these couple of clips here, we learn, yes, there was, this was tumultuous, like I said before. Police activity coming there, this, that, and the other, them getting in squabbles, fighting, all this kind of stuff. And we're going to watch a very quick clip of some of the video footage from the elevator. Trigger warning, it does display DV, but the reason I want to show just a little bit of this is just to paint the picture that I feel like the narrative in this was that you know she was not the aggressor and not this and that. And again, as all this evidence has come out, and as we watch more of the interrogation, I believe that she was the aggressor and you know obviously time will tell the the facts of the case will come out and tell uh, but let's just take a quick look at this now as you see it I mean it's hard to watch you see him he's trying to restrain her you saw in the opening clip where they get in she starts attacking him on the elevator and we'll hear more and more about the relationship and one thing that I think is interesting is again we're only hearing her side of this but as we get into this interrogation we're going to be able to hear things that just don't make sense or don't sound right so again before we jump in just remember April 3rd, this is when this took place. Police came to the apartment. She's covered in blood. Uh, she has now been charged with second degree murder for her late boyfriend at this point. Um, and so that's that. So what we're going to be watching is them bringing her in. This is like after this event has taken place. And so obviously there's going to be adrenaline, all that kind of stuff. But let's start listening to what took place through her lens but also pay attention to the things that she's saying and doing when the cops leave the room because i think this is all very telling so let's begin i'm assuming i'm the blue chair yes just uh do this for me so i can sit down um, like a paper, a paper towel or tissue or anything yeah i've been crying a lot thank you now I put this quick clip in there just because I think it's interesting that she's like, I want the paper towel. I've been crying a lot, you know, and again, I've not been in this situation, but I just feel like a lot of this adds up to this narrative, to this facade that she is trying to put on. Hi. Uh, is somebody coming? Yeah, yeah, he's coming right now. <laughs> Again, another very quick clip, but I wanted to show this because it's just the second they walk out of the room, she just collapses and starts crying and whatnot. I go back and forth between do I think she's aware of the cameras and is playing to them because some of the stuff that she'll do, I'm just like, if she is aware of it, I certainly wouldn't have done or said the things that she has done. Let's continue. Please, God, please, please, God, just let me, my dog, please, God. Christian, you okay? Okay, now I wanted to put these clips in there to quickly discuss, you know, what she's doing. She's praying, please let God let Christian be okay, be okay, be okay. This is personally what I think. And just kind of look at the rest of this through this lens and whatnot. I think that when this took place, I think that she clearly has a, a temper problem, right? I mean, we see this in the evidence and whatnot. Very erratic behavior. And I think that things went too far this time. And when we get into her version of like why things went the way they did and like the excuses for all this kind of stuff, I'll talk more about that. But I think what we're hearing here is someone praying for him to be okay. Not her first and foremost concern being that he's okay, but she knows like almost like deep down inside you know when you went over the line with something it might not be something like this obviously but whatever it is and you're like oh no i know i crossed the line oh just let me get away with this one time i feel like that's what's going on 
here and she will reference this stuff later in the thing in the interrogation which also makes me wonder how intentional is all of this to portray a facade yeah we're gonna start talking soon now i'm just getting everything set up Sorry, I'm not trying to be like, I'm just like, I, I just cannot believe the way my day went. Yeah. yeah it's ahead. way worse than, I just I really want to get to the hospital. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to like you now. Like, I desperately man. want to get yeah. to the hospital. Right. I mean, either way, so you don't rush, you know, you still wouldn't be able to see him at this point, obviously. You, you know, said what? You wouldn't be able to see him at this point, so it's that way you don't have to put it still. You're still working, you're still taking care of him, you know, it's processed. So I don't I just want to be in. there. Yeah. Can. Now again, she's asking to go to the hospital. We'll see her do this kind of stuff throughout, so just pay attention to it because I also think one thing she's doing is she's trying to gather information as to how he is. And we'll see her act this way at times. Like, she is desperate to know if he's dead. Here's my thing. When she describes the scene, and again, if you remember, I'm not going to put them up here, but she's covered in blood. You can't see it that good here. She's clearly wiped herself off and stuff, but some of the pictures, like the TMZ type pictures that came out from people getting photographs and still things of this when she was in the apartment, this was a bloody, gruesome scene. So if you did this, you would have to know this is not good. You would probably be sitting here like, please, I hope he's dead. I'm, or, I'm sorry, I hope he's not dead. I hope I didn't kill him. And I just feel like that's... Uh, her first and foremost thing here. Hello. Hi. <clears throat> My apologies for being absolutely fucking covered in blood. Listen, you don't have to apologize, okay? That can be your stuff. Mm -hmm. All right? Things happen, and you can't control it. Okay? Yeah. So... Okay, so this whole thing where she apologizes for being covered in blood, and again, it would be awkward, right? The cops are coming in, you have blood all over you. But to me, it was just such an odd thing to say. Now, granted, again, I've not been in this particular situation, so I'm not sure how I would personally act. We're all different, right? I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. But again, it's just kind of like a very weird icebreaker, okay? And then the whole thing of this isn't how I wanted my day to start, and I do not think it was. Who would, right? I don't think she woke up and said, I'm gonna, you know, know stab my boyfriend to death i don't think that was it at all i think her temper takes her to places like this no we were supposed to go to the park with my dogs today like i just is not how i expected this been sorry mm. that's not what we're talking about you asked me my birthday yeah. Okay, now again, this is a very erratic, this, you, you weren't talking about that, yes, my birthday, we're supposed to walk the dogs and all this kind of stuff. Again, lots of adrenaline, lots of this kind of stuff, I get it, right? Now, I, and I do not have clips of this or anything like that, but it's just from people talking and email and comments and stuff. Apparently, there was, she was either live on Instagram before this, like, she was displaying some weird behavior on some form of social media uh, before the incident happened, so it almost makes me wonder, like, you know, had, was she out partying the night before or during the day? Like what, like what was going on that she was in this kind of bizarre mood again, after the fact, I would only think that someone who has just committed a, you know, a murder like this would be a little erratic acting act afterwards. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses or excuse it, you know, away or anything, but I'm just trying to make some kind of sense of where she's coming from with the stuff that like I've you know seen out there. So let's continue. Well, I got a chance to talk to Christian today. To who? Christian. Who's Christian? Oh, the victim. They haven't told me about him. Yeah, no, I'm the victim. No, no. He's definitely the victim. What'd you say? No, he didn't know his name, so he was confused. Yeah. I was the one that went to the scene. Um, I, I just assume everybody knows everything. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Not always. Um, will I get a chance to talk to him? We'll if, see if, once, if he. We'll see once once everything once we're done with everything, um, the talking and with the scene and seeing what's what's the update with him, um, and then we'll definitely get you an answer later. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, now a couple of things in this clip. First of all, you know, she says, you know, Christian, and they're like, who? They're, you know, getting names straight and all this type of stuff. And she's like, the victim? He's definitely the victim. Okay, some of this is not gonna bode well for her uh, in the court case because I think that people can tear this apart. Now, obviously, there's two ways of looking at that, right? Clearly, he's the victim in the situation, whether it's intentional, not intentional, unintentional, you know, or <laughs> intentional, whichever one, right? Um, <clears throat> but again it's just again another weird thing to say and again fishing for information fishing for information she is desperate to find out number one a couple of things i want to go to the hospital she's trying to test the waters if she can leave or not in my opinion and then secondly you know what happened to him right i think that she you would have to know like i said before this might not end well i noticed at the very end where they were they were like you know this is what we're gonna do okay cool she doesn't say anything and she's like okay very untrusting. She is digging and digging to get the information that she just doesn't have yet. Is he okay? He's, this, he's from the hospital. They're still I, you I know, know. I'm monitoring him and talking to him. So we're waiting. Oh my God. So he's not even, he didn't even have to have surgery. Well, I don't know. They're, they're, okay. they're still, they're still uh, doing uh, x-rays and stuff like that. So I don't know yet. I'm waiting to hear a response. That's all I have to know. Thank okay. God. So That's all I need. We'll get to that in, in, in a little bit. Okay. And I'll, when, once we're done, I'll go talk to them again and see what's, what's, the, what's the update, okay? Okay, now here we go in for it. You know, the second that she interprets this to mean that he's okay, you know, oh, okay, so he didn't have to have surgery? And she gets super excited over it, right? She's like, that's all I need to know. So in her world, it's like, oh, he's fine. He didn't die. I'm okay. Because also in scenarios like this, she might be thinking, you know, well, I can get him to not press charges. You know, again, I don't know how 100% this works. Uh, like if the state would pretend he survived this, right? If it's even an option for them to you know what i mean between the two of them or whatever so i don't know but again she just the, the sense of relief that she does and to me the, her whole thing of oh so he doesn't even have to it seems very fake to me now again i don't know her right so i don't know how she acts that just might be how she is but it's just that little spidey sense thing i'm like this just it feels so off it feels it doesn't feel right if that makes sense let's keep going do you guys work here in Miami, or do you guys have your own business? Um, I do social media, so I'm an influencer, I guess is what oh, yeah. call it. Yes, I'm an influencer. Um, and he does stocks and crypto. What do you focus on, like Instagram or um, social media? Instagram. It pays the bills. So. What's your Instagram? Um, at Courtney Taylor. Huh? At Courtney Taylor. So here again, she describes what they're doing. Obviously, she's a little bit embarrassed by the OnlyFans, and I think she was making a pretty penny from all this, right? Uh, so it's like, well, hey, I, I mean, it is what it is. Um, but again, the story starts to unfold a little bit. You know, he does his thing, she does her thing. Uh, so let's keep going. And what is it that he does? Stocks and crypto. Stocks and crypto. He just has stocks and does crypto. So again, just more here of unfolding the story of what exactly he does, the stocks and cryptos. She does give him the fact of he's pretty, you know, damn good at it. Um, so there's that. And let's keep going. No, you can tell me whatever you want. You can tell me whenever you want. Um, yeah, we just had just gotten back together. I had broken up with him, and then he came back the last like two nights, mm -hmm. and everything was perfect. And then we started like into an argument, and I ended up getting scared, and I think that I overreacted, or not overreacted necessarily, but reacted, and I just didn't know exactly what might happen. Um, but 
um, yeah, we were right before before anything happened. We were going to walk my dog down to this park over by like the Paramount, mm-hmm. which has like the the um, beach volleyball and basketball court and all that. We're gonna walk them over there and let my dog Ranger play soccer. That was my plan for the day, and then go. How old are you going to the movie? Uh, or you go to a movie tonight in Miami Beach. My dogs are eight years old. Eight years old. So here we start to hear a little bit of like the, you know the story, like what happened. Now, one thing that's interesting is when she gets deeper into it later, talking about exactly how long they've been together, how much they break up, how much they fight. I mean, you can tell the level of just tumultuousness. But now, one reason for this clip as well is when she says, "I overreacted," and then she kind of walks that back a little bit. It's like, eh, "I didn't overreact, but maybe I just you know." She tries to come in. There's again key things that I think when it comes to trial, if this does go to trial, or I don't know, if she'll plead out or whatever. Uh, but there's going to be things that the state I think is going to really use against her from this interview interrogation I mean um, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and, and not answer any questions or make any statements do you understand each of these uh, rights I've explained to you yes yeah. okay. would I be able to talk to my father because <laughs> he's pretty much acts as my attorney with, like, I mean, not, like, for stuff like this, obviously, I've never been in this kind of situation. Is he an attorney? Or? Um, no. Um, he's just, he's, he's just, mm-hmm. well, we'll give you a chance we're to, we'll give you a chance to talk to your, your father, later. Okay. Um, I mean, before, I'd like to, I just feel like, I feel like, I don't know. I mean, I think every, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. I will be fine. <laughs> Tell me there's no need, but I just, I just would like to talk to somebody. No worries, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be able to give you some time to, to talk to that or with anybody that you need to talk to, okay? And I wanna go, I wanna go, I wanna go home and see my dogs, and I wanna go to the hospital. Will I be able to do that you tonight? Took, uh, I'm sorry, we took care of the dogs. We found someone. I believe your mom mentioned that that's taken care of them before when you traveled. Uh, mm-hmm. so, Eleven pots. Yeah. yeah, so we got we got able to get a hold of them, and they're actually gonna be taken over there, just so you know. So they're taken care of. They're in good hands. They're probably actually already there now. Okay, so we took care of those. Cause I know they were on the scene. They were going back and forth. They were the little, you know. Yeah. I, I know how dogs are. We're all dog lovers here. All three of us, you know, we also have dogs. So that's like family, and uh, we took care of them. Thank you. So, you know, yeah, the, the, the female officer that was over there was talking to my mom and trying, yeah, trying to get the food. Thank God. Yeah, they're in yeah. good hands. Thank you. Yeah. I just, I want to be, I, 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 want, I want to. Okay, a couple of things with this clip. First of all, the dogs. This has to be a rude awakening in a sense because when they start talking about we've got somebody to come take care of the dogs, this and the other, this realization of they're removing reasons for her to leave. You know what I'm saying? Like in her mind that she's given up. I need want to go talk to, you know, my dad. I want to see dad. I want to go to the hospital. I want to see the dogs. Oh, well, we've taken care of the dogs. Now, a huge source of contention, debate, all this kind of stuff that I've seen around has been on the aspect of them not letting her talk to her father or the lawyer thing and all that. And so I think it's interesting because basically this is how I interpret this is she's like, my dad basically is my dad. She's younger. I mean, she's obviously obviously over 18 as I'll say here in a little bit but you know she's younger she's a younger person so she's going to go to her parents or whoever that person is like that in her life to get advice and stuff like that I imagine she has some legal stuff that she has to always go through with you know brand deals whatever it was she was doing right so she's wanting her dad you know hey what should I do here now technically it's like they don't have to let her do that right but there's also this always this you know and i don't want to say gray line but it's like she can say i don't want to talk to anybody but it's this weird zone where she's kind of being held but kind of not again i ain't no lawyer doctor none of these people right so i don't know how the legal version of this works you know but it is kind of a, a little bit of a gray zone of like 
okay, well, my dad kind of talks to our attorney, so I want to talk to him, but you're not going to let me talk to him right now. But then I'm seemingly she can't leave. The way that the cops do this kind of stuff. So this part to me is very tricky. And I'm very curious to see, again, if this goes to trial, what the defense will do with this right here and pretrial motions and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't, I honestly, it was such a blur. I was on the phone with my mom. I don't know. For me right over here. Yeah, you can reread it. Take your time, reread it again. Same thing you this is why I, I would like to call my dad and say, can I just do this? Or should I have to get a lawyer? Because I realize, like, how very serious yeah. this is. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I was sitting there in a freaking puddle of my boyfriend's blood begging him to, like, please not, like, fucking give up on me. Like, man, like, this shit is fucking serious. <laughs> so, I mean... I don't think I'm necessarily in trouble, but like I just would like to. I mean, can I just talk to? I mean, I have, I have. This happened, and I was. The whole situation happened, and I haven't talked to anybody who means anything to me. No, I, I understand. Uh, right now, okay, right well, you know what? I. Uh, okay. What? No. Just, just, I've just, never been in that kind of situation. I can talk I to your dad. You, you can talk to him later. Because. But before I talk to you guys. Why can't I talk to him beforehand? Well, because I, w I would like to understand what's, what's going on. I know, but like if I say, hey, is it cool if I sign a constitutional rights waiver because when my boyfriend your dad, has... Your dad has, is like, not a lawyer. Yeah, if you're, if you're an adult, if you were well, a minor... Well, he would be the one who would... If, if, he if, he, if he if handles under my lawyer, team, too. If you were under 18, then yeah, I would, I would provide you a phone call to your father. But you're over 18, so... I don't feel like it. <laughs> I don't want to tell my parents. Yeah, I get you. But I, I feel the same way with my parents, you know. But I, I still go to them, too, for, for questions that they've dealt with in, in, in the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. My yeah. dad handles my... I am so, like, I'm so, like, freaking out right now a little bit. Like, I just, I want to go to the hospital, and I want to just call my fucking mom. And I know that I, I do not get that right. <laughs> I know it. Well, but here's the thing. Is that this is constitutional rights waiver. My dad handles my lawyer. I'm not going to take a court-appointed lawyer. My dad handles my lawyer. I would not be calling my lawyer. So my dad is the first person who I would call, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a situation like this where, so where somebody's in a hospital. I've never been in this kind of situation. That's why, like, I don't want to do anything wrong, you know? I mean, it's, it's your decision at the end of the day, um, but... What happens if not? If not, then that's it. We don't talk about what happened to him. We just have to take uh, the stories that we've been told from, from the people next door and previous situations and try and narrow it down to what happened today. You get a much better picture and much better idea coming from you who was there today than us trying to piece it together from other people as well. In there, you know? There's no better story to get than, than yours who was there. So which is why we prepare for you. But you know, like you said, it's your decision if you want to or not. But for us to obviously proceed and, and make a better decision for all of us, it's getting your story. You know, you, you were there. You know, you were. So you. My boyfriend is not dead, is he? Well, he can't talk to us right now. Either way, he's in the hospital. Your, your Jack is a homicide. Yeah. So I don't That's know. That's like the Dexter vibe. All I of believe the things are like. I believe to you on scene. It's Sunday, so Sunday the domestic violence scenes don't work. So we handle. Their, their calls, anytime we get in trouble with the message button calls, we handle it for them. Yeah. And so, that's why we were raised from the beginning. Can I go and come back? No, 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 unfortunately, no, I can't. It's steps, you know, once we handle this, then we'll go to the next step. And Am I, is there a chance I'm going to go home tonight? I, I don't have a definite answer for you. Okay, well, I'll just... <laughs> okay. So, the time is... I just, I need to, I need to... Right. So let's start from the start. 
Okay, so that was a huge clip, uh, but one thing that, one thing, several things that were very interesting about this clip. Okay, so a couple of things. This is again where I'm very curious to see what the defense does with this part of it. Now, again, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know any of the actual legal stuff, how this works, but just watching it, you know, okay, so to give her, I'll give her a couple of things. I get what she's saying about, I want to talk to like my, uh, someone, you know, one of my people, you know. Now, listening to what the cops are saying, they give her the choice of, well, you don't have to sign this, but we're going to go, we have to go based on what we know from neighbors, from these people, and kind of figure out what we think happened today. Now, very interesting because to me, in my opinion, if somebody was like confident of being like, oh, I'm, I'm the, uh, the, the victim here, the real victim here, even though this happened to my boyfriend, you know, he's been doing A, B, and C to me, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? I would think that they would be more like, no, I mean, I, I need my lawyer. You can talk to the neighbors. They know what's happened. Well, as we've seen through evidence and all that kind of stuff, you know, there's a lot of drama that's gone on with them, right? And it's some of the stuff, it looks like he, you know, he's painted to look bad. She's painted to look bad. So it's this very murky zone. So I think that this whole thing of kind of closing down her world of options to her of, you don't have to sign this. You don't have to say anything, but we're going to go get other people's word for it and then figure out on our own what we would do. And then the cop says, you know, it's best to come from your mouth. You know, we need to hear it straight from you. Of course, the cops want her to sit here and basically either confess or whatever to you know move this along now we already know at this point that you know what's happened with this okay um not obviously the resolution of the case but just you know at this point she's in jail this and the other so on and so forth okay so then towards the end where she finally point blank asked is he dead this to me is where we can see all the stuff leading up to it where she's been fishing for the information bam she goes in for the ask is he dead and they're not gonna even give her that now i do not know at this point if they know that or not or if they're just pretending like they don't or whatever but i definitely feel like they're sitting here trying to figure out like was this you know domestic violence or was this her you know like what what really happened here and thank god they are trying to figure that out right uh so i find that part interesting i also find it interesting that even though i can see how she arrives here of being like well i'm just gonna try and talk my way out of this because that's essentially what she's doing right she is being told she can't leave you know and they're like well can i am i gonna be able to leave no mm -mm. you know can i call my parents for anybody? Mm -mm. so none of these things are there again i'm very curious to see what will happen in the court systems with this information and the way it's portrayed out. Okay, now this next clip, this is gonna be like five minutes, but I'm gonna break it down a little bit, uh, just so it's not some huge amount of time here. But this is gonna be her describing what happened. Now, it's important to listen to this part because she also does this again later when they're like tell us again what happened which this is just normal right the cops are going to try and catch her in a lie uh but listen to what she's saying because to me when i listen to this i was like okay i'm getting the type what sets her off if that makes sense and then he left i guess he went to go bike over there he that's just what he said i don't know if he walked or biked but he told me if you're the bikers please like the bike's cool yeah okay. Um, he came back, um, and I said something about, like, oh, are you going to, like, reshare your location with me? Like, did you want to share it? And, um, he said, yeah, yeah, I didn't share it. And I was like, oh, when did you do that? And he was the other day, like, when you were done with me. And I was like, okay, well, fair enough. And, like, reshare it. Um, and then he told me. I mean, they kind of like turned into like a little like argument or something. Okay, so the sharing of locations. This part to me is very interesting. Now, again, they have not been together that long, right? So she's saying that, you know, he's going to go somewhere. Are you going to share my location? Now, remember, they break up, they get back together, they break up. So the other day they broke up, now they're back together. So this incident all occurs in the middle of this tension right even if things have been going well the day before this seems like a couple to me that it's every day is a different roller coaster ride so she's wanting him to share the location now already and again i i don't know what it's like for the younger people out there i'm just gonna say this you know but the sharing of location phones stuff like this i mean i can only go on my experience you know my most recent relationship we 
and not out of a trust thing, but because we were together for so long, if I needed to use his phone, we knew how to get in each other's phone, but we weren't trying to hide anything, right? I'm not saying either of them were, but I wouldn't really think to be like, give me your location. You know, like I just, you know, it, I just, it's, it's not a thing, right? But maybe for younger people, that's more normal. I don't know. But to me, that just seems like not very trustworthy. Uh, that type thing. Like that's already an issue, right? If we're at that level. And clearly with this particular couple, it is because we see where this will escalate. Let's keep watching. And then he told me to reshare mine. And I was like, okay, yeah, I will. And then I didn't do it immediately. Um, he asked me about it again. Um, and I don't know what I was thinking, but it just said something about, well, what if I'm somewhere you don't want me to be? Okay. Which I'm, I wouldn't have been. I love him. Um, but just feel like, you know. Maybe you don't want to know where I am. I guess maybe it'll just like hurt him because he was pressing me. Okay, so that maybe you don't want to know where I am at, and da 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 da, and she tries to backtrack it. Anyone, like the vibe I get from her right now is she's describing the toxicity of this entire scenario. And when you listen to yourself talking about something like this, whatever, it is one of those things where it's like, this is absolutely insane, right? And it sounds insane because I'm like, this is just petty, right? You know, she's like, oh, you don't want to know where I'm at. Da, 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 da. You know, it's just this level of stuff right here. I'm like, this is drama, you know, major drama. Um, and ended up pinning me against the wall and then I mean I said like choking me on the floor it's just like they were looking at my neck and I was like I mean I'm not saying like choking me like you know whatever but I mean he had my like neck like I but and this happened twice before okay. where I couldn't breathe and I was on the floor yeah. I could not breathe and I don't think that he is trying to kill me mm -hmm. but I was scared and all three times I have been scared Okay, so very quickly. Now, remember the footage earlier on the elevator where they get on and she's like immediately going in for him and he kind of puts her not in a headlock, but like in a body lock to just keep her from, I mean, this is a big dude, right? If he wanted to hurt this girl, he could take her out in one swing probably, right? So, but he's more or less protecting himself and her. So when she starts describing all this stuff right here, like, oh, he did this, you know, he did, 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 did. You know, my first thing is I'm like, well, the evidence that we've seen, I mean, what were you doing to him first? You know, and I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know, oh, I, I'm, it, the evidence that I've seen doesn't portray him to be this aggressive type person. Now, again, if that's out there and I'm incorrect, feel free to correct me in the comments. You know, but listening to her describe this, and again, a key word in that last thing was, I wasn't afraid for my, I didn't think he was going to kill me, or I believe is what she said, but I was afraid. Now, again, and coming back and trying to form a defense, that's going to be key right there. And again, I think both sides can use that information in the way she said it. I think the defense could say, well, yeah, she was scared. She said she was scared. But she might not have thought he was going to kill her in that moment, but five moments later, she did. And then, of course, the state can say, well, she says right here, she didn't think that she wasn't you know, going to die. So then why do we end up with him being stabbed? Um, so, yeah. I'm on the floor, and you have me pinned, and what's me up, um, I'm on the, uh, get my mom on the phone, and I'm just trying to remember, remember. hey, my mom on the phone, um, and I remember she was standing, like, against the couch, like, we were, like, we were, obviously, it was a big deal at this point, mm -hmm. um, so this happened like over by the door and somehow it was like over in the living room. We were standing by um, by the couch, facing toward the kitchen, and I was in the kitchen. And then he just like, I could see like all the whites in his eyes and he was like, like coming at me. And so I grabbed, I grabbed one of these knives. My mom got me for Christmas. I grabbed one of them. And I was like, I swear, I swear to God, I swear to God. It was just like, I, I mean, I'd grab it and be like, don't come in, you were closer to me. 
Because, I, could, I mean, earlier, I was having two other times I couldn't fucking breathe. I'm sorry. I couldn't breathe. And it's very scary. And I just think, like, just like this kind of thing where I was saying, like, do you know if he's okay? She was dying to say it unintentional. I swear to God, she was dying to say it, right? It was like on the tip of her tongue, right? Okay, so listening to her describe this whole scenario down, you know, describing the whole scenario, and then the whole act of she's in the kitchen, she grabs this knife. Now, again, I'm not in the situation. I don't know. But the way this is being described, it's like she's saying, oh, I wanted to grab it because I was scared. I wanted to be like, stay away, stay away. This is where I think that this just escalated and blew up. Now, I'm not trying to give her, oh, so it's okay that she grabbed the knife or anything. Because to me, I'm like, the, the, I'm not hearing a, a warranted reason to grab the knife. Again, this is just like a blown up dramatic you know, incredibly toxic relationship at this point, right? She's grabbing this knife for what, right? Um, because again, if you remember from the earlier clips we watched where the cops are like, you know, look, um, you wanted this restraint order and all this, but yet he, you have him living here. You want him out of your life, but he's been living here with you. And I get when you get into these toxic relationships, they're very complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, I understand that. Um, but the way she's describing this, I just feel like she's tiptoeing around the obvious that it's like, yeah, this is not any scenario where this man and needed to end up being stabbed to death. If you like, if you, if he's choking me, and he's angry enough, he might like, or, I mean, this is different, I think, but if he's like choking me or like pinning me or something and I can't breathe, he might go too long. So I grab my, sorry, I grab my, I grab my knife and I said, don't come anywhere closer to me. I had absolutely no intention of using it. I'm sorry, I had to pause it. We have the intention, okay? It's a, it's just a thing at this point. Sarah Boone has done this to us. Let's keep going. I'm on the phone with my mom, and he's coming at me like he's going to grab either the phone or like the knife or something. And so I was just like, I I was like, don't, don't come any closer. It's coming at me, and I threw it. And I meant for it to go. How far away was he? From, well, I was by my fridge, and he was like by the edge of one of the chairs of the sofa. Um, okay. Like comparing to what 10 you feet? I'm, I'm trying to think in my head. I'm trying to make the... Was it closer than I am? No. What, was this further? Okay, so she throws the knife. Okay, this is where this just, you know, again, has lost me completely. She throws the knife. Doesn't stem to it. Throws the knife. And it does all this damage to him. Now, also, if you listen to what she's saying and the way she's describing it, she goes, I threw the knife. Almost like she just let the words kind of fall out of her mouth a little bit. Just kerplunk on the floor to see, like, is anybody buying this? Anybody going to go for this right here? You know, I threw the knife and this is what it did. I'm sitting here like this. I'm like, I want to see what the evidence shows in court. Because I'm like, honey, if you could throw a knife and do that right there. She needs to be, you know, those traveling, the circuses where they throw the knife at the people. You know, and they like miss and all that kind of stuff. I mean, come on, Courtney. <laughs> It was further than that. Okay. So then um, you were by the fridge and he was by the couch? You were by the fridge and he was by the couch? Yes, I was between the couch. And then, in front of the fridge, he was by the couch. Yes. And then behind, behind my island. And then what kind of movements did he make that he, uh, at, the, at the moment? He was going to walk running up? running at me. Running? Okay. Well, tra trudging, aggressively walking, something. What was he doing? Like, was he doing something with his hands, or? Doing he had his hands up. I really could, I couldn't tell you exactly. Was he yelling at you at the time? Yes. Yeah. So again, this part's interesting because they're trying to almost like give her something like, was he doing something with her hands? I don't remember. You know, again, this is where the state and I'm sure the defense obviously too, are going to really be able to form some cases because from what I've seen from layman terms, from the sofa point of view, you know, I'm just like, you yeah, haven't formed a very good argument for self-defense or, you know, like I was afraid for my life type thing. Right. Um, I I'm just not seeing it here. What was he saying? Oh, 
I remember one of the things where I don't think it's relevant. No, go ahead, tell me. It might be relevant. It might help me understand this a little more. He said, why don't you go find one of those, one of the fucking guys in Joe Biden? Because I had said something about that when I broke up with him mm-hmm. like a week ago. Out of anger. I didn't say it because I want that. Because mm-hmm. I love him. So again, this evidence of this volatile personality and temper, right? I mean, she's admitting here, like he said, the thing about the G-Wagon and her going to, you know, do the guys driving one or something like that. And she's like, well, I said something about that, you know, when we broke up a week ago. I mean, again, this just seems like someone who, when they get angry, like nothing's off limits, right? And so clearly, right? I mean, we see, unfortunately, where this poor guy ended up. Was that at the moment that he was charging you or earlier in one of the arguments? It was before he choked me. When I, yes, it was before he choked me. Okay. And, or whatever. Um, so, he gets So, no, not right then. I couldn't tell you exactly what he said right then. Okay. So. But I swear to God, I was scared. I mean, after like what I had just, I was yeah. scared. And I was on the phone with my mom and it was still happening. Yeah. I was scared. So to me, this is like, oh, she knows. She knows, right? She keeps coming. I was scared. I was scared. Again, they tried to, what did he say this to when he was charging at you? No. You know, again, it's just like, yeah, this is, to me sounds like a standard run-of-the-mill fight that they had. And this time she took it too far and killed him. I mean, that's just pe- point, pretty much what I think happened. You know, and again, she just keeps coming back with the, oh, I was scared, or oh, this, or oh, that. And it's just, it's not cutting it for me. So you told me you told me that, that he had you against the wall at one point, right? With the hands over your neck. Mm-hmm. And what? How did you end up from the wall to the ground? Let me go. Uh-huh. Let me go, and then I started swinging on him because I've been against the wall. Okay. I started trying to hit him. Yeah. And then he put me on the ground. He dropped you to the ground. What do you do? Like. Did he like lift you up, or did he grab your hair? Did he just kind of like rotate you onto the ground? I really couldn't even tell you. He pushed you. I could. I. I. If I could have like been given all these questions, you know, before, I could be like, hmm, please let me like, think about it. Or when I'm trying to remember like a whole situation of where I was very upset about something, yeah. which I've learned this in therapy and whatever. It's like. Write down like all the details so you don't forget. Just like write it all out clearly mm-hmm. so it makes sense to you and makes sense to somebody else. Okay, so now she's going off in this therapy thing or whatever. And again, you hear a little bit more detail. Like, oh, well, he had me against the wall, so then I started swinging on him. And then that's how he ended up in the ground. So a little bit more clarification. He didn't just throw her on the ground. Okay, you know, again, you saw, use the elevator evidence footage as this, right? They get on the elevator, she's swinging, she's punching. I mean, she's a scrappy little girl, right? I mean, pulling his damn braids out. I mean, I'm like, come on, right? And again, I'm like, this dude's a big dude, right? She's, a, you know, look at them compared to one another. And so that's where I'm just like, there's a difference between someone trying to essentially protect themselves or protect her from herself. And then if he was just, you know, wanted to swing on her, right? I think this would be they would know real quick right she would be pulverized <laughs> okay and so this is the part again where she omits information that she comes back with it and now she's wanted to write everything down again you know i think we're off in fairy tale land with a lot of this stuff i think she went off on him and she ended up killing him but i haven't had a chance to have a pen and paper or my phone to like write down exactly what happened and i haven't really even like fully thought about it so honestly my my answer is i couldn't even, i don't remember um, so he has you on the ground, you end up on the ground, and he has his hands over your, your neck, correct? Yeah? Yes. So, um, and then is he saying something to you at the time when he's on the ground on top of you? Or? He was, he was saying something like gritting his teeth, I don't remember what it was. Like what? He was saying something like gritting his teeth, like with the white to the side, but I don't remember what it was. 
Okay. Um, and then uh, and then he at one point he stops, right? Sorry. And um, what you get up? You go to the bedroom or what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I go get my I get my phone from mm-hmm. um, the kitchen. I got my phone from the kitchen. I called my mom. I was talking to her, and then he was following me around the apartment. And actually, like, I, I mean, just like after, I'm not, I mean, we shouldn't be together. You guys have a history of domestic violence? Yeah. You say you've been together how long, sir? Almost two years. Almost two years. And after two years. So how many, how many incidents do you think you've had? Uh, I don't, I don't know. But we shouldn't be together. When you say one or two or just too many to. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I haven't touched my ankle. It's like, what? what? Like, I just want, I just want to take a shower, God. Um, okay. No, 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 no. We can, we can. I'll get you a Okay, very interesting. So, I think that the ankle thing was her trying to break up the energy. They were really close, you know, we don't need to be together. We don't need to be together. And then them getting into how many domestic things have y'all had. She got very, this is not a comfy thing. So, you hear one and a half, two years together. When she starts laying out how much the cops have been involved and how many incidents, it's almost like, I'm like, did y'all just start in on this after the first date? Me looking also at things where it's like, oh, the sharing of the locations, the this, the that, you know, it just sounds like a very insecure person. I'm speaking of her, uh, very jealous, very this kind of a, a thing, right? So, you know, again, I wasn't in the relationship. I don't know. But just looking at some of the evidence that comes through, that's what it sounds like. And again, I think the whole angle thing was her trying to break that energy up in the room, right? It was, oh, my God, I this is getting too much. Let's, you know, my ankle's bleeding, whatever. Let me cry. Let me do this. I mean, whatever. You know, because then she even says what she's doing. I'm not trying to interrupt, but you are, right? You've gone this long. And now all of a sudden, the ankle's going to bother you. You said, uh, oh, have, you, have, have you made a report before? Uh, no. You've never made a report? Oh, I did in, um, I did in Dallas, actually, about yeah. a year ago. Um, and he was detained. And what happened there? Um, he had pushed me in the, um, lobby, but it wasn't, like, a big deal, and they made it a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ended up getting taken to the hospital or jail or something, yeah. um, which I don't think it was necessary, but yeah, he had been. And then also I, I had been arrested for it as well mm-hmm. in um, Vegas in August, oh. so he and I each had one. Okay. What happened in Vegas? Um, we just got in an argument in the hotel room. Mm-hmm. and. Um, what I guess made them arrest me was that I said I, I had thrown a glass at him. Oh, okay. Like a glass of, like a drink. Okay, so we start to see the evidence come out. Oh, we each have, you know, gotten an arrest for domestic. He pushed me. You know, oh, in Vegas, I threw a glass at him. Now, do we see a theme here, right? Threw the glass at him, throws a knife at him. I mean, you know, it's not looking good. For sure, for some of it, yeah. So, you think you can tell us the story one more time, just so I can make sure that I didn't miss anything? Didn't you write everything down? No, um, he's writing it down for me. But I just, want, I just want to make sure that you can explain to us one more time the story. Okay. Well, I mean, you can see how I am. Um, okay. Now, everything aside, even when they asked her in this interview, I was like, oh my God, it's taken so long to get this much out of her. Do we have to go through it again? You know, but I mean, it's what they do. They want to see if her story changes all this. And here, in my opinion, we see the real Courtney. She, her spidey senses are up. She's like, but didn't she just write it all down? Hmm? You know, it's like, okay. 
and watch how annoyed she is with this right this is this is courtney and her temper this is more of what we're really the person we're really dealing with well you want to go get me subway we wake up we've broken up i broke up with him about a week ago my mom came into town she was in town because of it and i finally i told her like Anyway, she came into town because of this. She was there for about six days. My boyfriend was freaking squatting in my elevator, like, little room. But I didn't want to kick him out because he said he wanted to be close to me. I'm like, okay. Okay, first of all, notice she does the thing again. Oh, there's blood under my fingernails. This is a thing for her, right? She's very nervous. She's very anxious when she recites the story. Now, here we get into the mom was in town for six days. We had broken up. He was squatting in this little elevator room, but I didn't want to kick him out. He said he wanted to be close to me. This is stuff where I'm just like the toxicity of it, right? Where I'm like, you know, this, this isn't going to help her case. Um, I eventually feel like, okay, I got this under control, you can go home. Then she goes home. That, that crap with the security guard who I guess just had an agenda, had an agenda. That happened yesterday. Um, or was it day before yesterday? Honestly, I really don't. I can't think of it. It's day before yesterday. <laughs> um, so... Which security guard is this? Do you know his name? Or I don't remember name? his name. I could point him out in the lineup okay. in one second. Um, so after that fact, I was like, wow, you just tried to cause a problem for no no reason. I thought it was his fault. I was like, why are you doing this? Like, I, Just because, like I said, that we're over blah, blah, blah. And he was trying to talk to me, and I just didn't want to. I didn't want to talk to him. I really let him have it over the phone. Then I let him come back and spend the night, and then he explained the whole thing, and I was like, oh, my gosh. He's definitely too nice to you. Yeah. Um, he explained the whole thing, and I was like, okay, you know what? Let's agree. We will never, like, touch each other again out of anger, and he will never gaslight me again. Those were the two, like, main things. And this was a very light, late night. So here it's coming more into focus as to what's going on. We hear the process of the breaking up. Promises are made. We won't do it again. We won't touch each other out of anger. So on and so forth. You know, so. So the last couple of days have been, he was just great. He was happy to be back in the apartment. I was happy to have him back in the apartment because I missed him. And been waking up telling me, good morning. I love you. Touching me. Like, it's just, I felt very, very loved when I woke up this morning. That's why I'm so, like, heartbroken. It's just, like, why? Why? Like, w I should have just left the apartment. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it. So here, I think you can honestly see how she thinks about things. Like, she's looking back over it, and she did, oh, I felt loved. I should have just left. Now she's out of that intense anger. Something worse has happened, so she's second-guessing everything. And, God, if I had just done this, I wouldn't be here. Um, okay, so anyway, he went to go get me Subway. Or he went to go get himself Subway. Then got me Subway. He rode his bike or, I guess, whatever, walked something. Came back. And then... Um, I was trying to look for his location, like, while he was gone. Not because I thought, was wondering where he was, like, sketchy. Yeah. But, I'm just, like, trying to see how far he was, because yeah, I was... He was on his way back, or... Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. So, I couldn't see it, and he said that he would have changed, he would change it, like, before, I think, I don't know. Um, and he was at, I... He asked me if I would change mine back, and I said something along the lines of what? 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 Oh, I said something. I, I'm staring at your yellow paper because it's in front of me. I cannot read one thing, so I don't know if you think like I'm. No, no. Okay. So, so, so I mean, this whole statement is sketchy, right? I mean, she tells on herself the whole way. First of all, this whole thing about, oh, will you share your location? I'll share my location. She, oh, I went to check his location, not being sketchy or whatever, but just, you know, whatever. 
honey, he went to go get you Subway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, let the man go get you Subway for God's sakes. What was he gone for five hours? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, that would be a thing where my first thing would be call them. Hey, are you okay? You've been gone for, you went to go get Subway like three days ago, right? I'm not saying that's how this went down, but it's just like the level where I'm just like, you see the controlling, the the, the non-trusting, the this, the that, you know, and right, wrong, or indifferent, let's, let's say he gave her a reason not to trust her, that she had a legitimate reason that she should be like, I need to check up on this man wherever he's at that's not good right that's not healthy you know this is not a situation to remain in then because it's just not now i'm not saying that's the case but I, this is just you know her logic doesn't make sense to me then the last part where she's like what 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 i'm just looking at your yellow paper i can't read anything on there i'm not sure if you, and what i think she wanted to say and this is me putting words in her mouth and thinking for her so do with that what you will is that she's thinking that he's thinking she's reading the notes about what happened to recount her story like she's insecure about that right because she's probably having a hard time with some of this stuff because we hear way more details coming out in this recap than we did in the first version he comes back I asked him about his location. He said he'll change it. Asked me about mine. Um, I said something mean or unnecessary about, even though I wasn't anywhere, saying something like, oh, well, you wouldn't want to know. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, and he ended up getting upset. And that's like where it went from there. I mean, it's a wall. I don't remember exactly where it went from there. And I was on the floor. Let me go. I called my mom. Um, so he had, you, he, had, he had you against the wall. He was holding by the neck, right? Yes. And then he let you go. You start swinging at him. And then he ends up putting you on the, on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. Correct? Oh yeah, when I was up against the wall. I, I mean, when I when he had me like this, yeah. I was just trying to get it off. Yeah, you're trying to get it off. But it wasn't. I I didn't feel. I didn't feel. You felt the pressure. It wasn't a long time. Yeah. It wasn't a long time, and it wasn't extremely hard. It was kind of just like. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all. Again, I just revert back to the imagery of the elevator scene and that, and I'm like, she would probably describe that as, he got on the elevator and immediately put me in a headlock. You know, and I'm just like, yeah, that's not how that went down, girl. You know what I'm saying? That's not how that went down. And again, I just feel like she's being very, this whole interaction is very, like again, this whole little, I just call it plopping it out just a little bit just to see if anyone buys up. And again, here's the thing. I have no doubt when people are in these situations, even with her, there's the adrenaline going on. There's this, you're going to have blank spots in your memory, right? And so the whole interaction of how he ended up doing this and whatnot, but I think what she's intentionally, intentionally leaving out is how much extra she was being of swinging, hitting, cussing, screaming, yelling. Because to me, what clearly happened, again, and this is allegedly, he went out, they've had this tumultuous relationship to begin with. She is checking for his, um, what do you call it? Uh, his location. He comes back. She's already worked herself up in a frenzy of whether it's just the control of, he said he was going to do this. He hasn't done it. And then he comes back in with, are you going to change your location? Well, you wouldn't want to know where I'm at. You see what I'm saying? And it's this bad, it just, it starts right going back and forth. And it's like, oh my God, people just, it, this is so bad. Okay. And then he put you on the ground after that. Mm -hmm. And then you said something that you don't remember what you said. Turning his teeth. Okay. And then he let you go. Yes. Okay. Then you got up, and then what happened? When I went into the kitchen, I picked up my phone from my charger okay. to call my mom. Um, actually, at that point, I walked into the living room. She just sat on the couch. And I didn't finish the floor. I walked in the living room. I, like, I called my mom. You could see I was calling my mom. Okay. That made him angry. I went into the living room, took us on the couch. He came in there and tried to get the phone out of my hand, so I went back into the kitchen. And at that point, I was sitting there and I said, I grabbed the knife, which 
Did he ever get the phone out of your hands? Or? No. No? So this whole thing, I'm calling my mom, go in here, get the knife. Did you ever get, he ever get the phone out of your hand? No. Uh, again, I just, I do not think this interaction is going to bode well for her, her description of the interaction when it comes down time for trial, if this goes to trial. No, um, it just came over to me, I was trying, like, trying to get it, and then I wanted to just I don't, I don't not think that this was, <clears throat> I don't, I don't know. I really don't know if this is justified at all. I really, I actually don't know. Well, that's what we're I really don't know out. because I know I was scared, but I really don't know. So you got the knife? Because I got, okay, yeah, I grabbed a knife. I grabbed a knife and I, I said. Oh, uh, yeah. Sitting here, I don't know if this is justified, you know. And this is where I think, because I don't think it was, obviously, you know that by now, right? And I think that she knows deep down inside that it's not justified, right? I think that she let her temper get to her and get out of control, and this thing escalated this huge argument where he's now, unfortunately, deceased. Like, pretty much just, like, don't get any close to me. And then... Said something. And then I just, like, threw it. And I really... How exactly did you throw it? Did you just throw like that? How many or, times? No, how, how how exactly did you throw it? Like, you threw it like this? Or kind of like, you like kind of like flung it at him? Overhead? Or how, how did that... Oh, I just flung it. You just flung it? Over your head or from like... Like this. Okay. So from yeah. like beside I'm your head? Holding it, yeah. So not like... Okay, like I'm holding it like this. This is not the knife, the, uh, the, the blade, the, right, the blade, mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I just, for dang sure, did not stab him. That would be insane. I mean, I didn't even think that this would touch him, but I mean, I thought that I would scare him, I would scare him by just grabbing it. I thought I would scare him by just grabbing it, but that didn't work. Um, so, anyway, comes at me, and then I just fun, okay. and I was... She dang sure didn't stab him. Okay, girl, let's just let her go home now. Kind of just trying to fling it, fling it past when you him. When you threw it, when you flung it, how close was he at that time? I mean, I said 10 feet, but if this is 10 feet, it was definitely more than 10 feet. Okay. I mean, if somebody goes into my apartment, they can see how far it was. Yeah. But I did not, I did not wanted to actually injure him. I mean injure him. Mm -hmm. And what did he okay do what did, kind of thing. what did he do after after you you flung the knife out? Did he walk around or did he fall right then and there or what happened? He fell down. He fell down? Yeah. He didn't he didn't walk around or anything like that or still try and chase you or, or what? Well, again, she's kind of buckled down on the I did not stab him, you know, and then the whole thing of I didn't want it to, you know, kill him or whatever, you know, but the injure him, you know, I mean, she's really, I mean, if you read between the lines with this girl, I'm like, honey, this is not a cute look, right? It's, eesh. you know, <laughs> again, this is another one of these reasons why, and I get that there's going to be this whole thing with the talking to the lawyer thing in the beginning. This is why you don't see anything and you talk to a lawyer because this is so bad. Now, again, with the evidence going forth, you know, when people who commit these crimes and do something something, you know, take someone's life or whatever, I mean, at least they make, you know, they're telling on themselves, right? Because I feel like that's what she's done throughout this whole interview. She's told on herself. And I think that this was done out of a moment of anger and jealousy and rage and all that kind of stuff. And she ended up taking his life with it. Uh, I'm very curious to see what the evidence will show because remember how they were very big on like, did you throw the knife this way or this way or this way? I mean, We've all watched Dexter. We know about the blood analyst stuff, okay? So here, you're going to be able to, I would think in the evidence if it goes to trial, they're going to be able to tell exactly what happened. Is she lying? Did she stab him? If she did throw, you know, she's like, oh, I flung it. Imagine just flinging a knife 10 feet away. I mean, come on, right? This is, you know, we're not buying it, girl. Okay. And, uh, 
what did you do after he fell? Um, I just, I ran over to him and grabbed him and like, it was just like a blur, but I ran over to him and I grabbed him and I just said, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> like, I'm like the worst person to be around. What do I do? Um, and he said, he said, um, he said, call somebody. And I was on the phone with my mom. He said that? Um, he said, call, he said, just, just call somebody. And I was like, okay, I'm on the phone with my mom. And I think after this happened, when everything went down and, you know, the the incident took place i think that's when the immediate like what have i done on her part kicked in right it would for anybody and i think that that's when she went into like oh my god i really messed up this time right this rage this aggression that she seems to have in her and with this relationship it just it boiled over to the, where we're at now and he said put pressure on it because i'm just thinking i was like uh, I, he kept trying to lay down he kept trying to lay down and it looked like he was losing and like, oh my God, God forbid I fucking lose Christian. Like, I'm so okay with like us breaking up at some point or now, or obviously, whatever. I don't give a shit, but God forbid anything, anything happens in God forbid. Um, so, yeah. I just like he just kept trying to lay down and I was like, Please fucking Christian, please don't do this, please don't fucking do this to me and he kept like he kept sounding like he kept sounding like he couldn't talk or something like he was just like closing his eyes like, wait open your, open your eyes, open your eyes. I was talking to him about his mom and his grandma. So this just sounds absolutely horrible, right? This poor guy, what a horrible way to go. Remember, there's tons of blood, there's all this going on, and her reaction to this was like, come on, don't lay down, do the, like she, this was not, I accidentally stabbed my lover in the hand, right? This was a horrific scene. So this is why she's so afraid, did he die, did he die, did he die? I mean, come on, right? She's seen him essentially start the dying process right in front of her. When will I be able to change out of these bloody clothes? I was holding him while he was bleeding. Yeah. I mean, my toes. Yeah. We're gonna it's see if we can find something for hours. you, and then, uh, and then we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna see if we can find something for you, and then we'll bring it over, okay? Find something for me? Yeah. From your house, like change over. Why can I? I just want to change my own gloves. Yeah. Take a shower and change my own gloves. Just give us a minute so we can get everything in order, and then we'll we'll come back with you some some news, okay? Again, even after all this, she's still fishing. Find something for me. I just want to change into my own clothes. I want to take a shower. She wants to go home. Girl, no, she messed up. Now, also remember the whole, I don't know if y'all remember this or not, and I didn't even have it here to put, uh, and I don't think I could because it's somebody else's TikTok, but when this first popped off and that girl was down in that like downstairs bar at some hotel, and she was filming uh, Courtney and her dad, she was like, you just killed your boyfriend. And it was like, it was self-defense, or it was just the whole thing, right? that all went down and so now looking at this and seeing this evidence of like what took place right it's like oh my god you know she uh, she knows she messed up she knows it's bad but she is just like you know continuing this like as she wants to go home the whole nine yards Can you yeah, let me get my hand sanitizer and I'll bring it to you. Okay, thank you. That's not my best too. Yeah. And thank you. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for asking. <sighs> so. Yeah, what a fucking nightmare. You, so you're living in a nightmare right now. Yes. You know? What so just. Um, Why are you such a nightmare? Because they're gonna because they, they don't they don't have a picture of your boyfriend, so they want to make sure that they have a, a photo I think from your uh, social media. So they're gonna because they they don't they don't have his ID they don't have anything so they need to know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. they they just want you to identify. Him. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And I told honestly I said I don't have a problem with that. Okay. You know I mean this is not a uh, who stabbed Christian case. This is you know we know what happened. Uh, well we know part of what happened. 
so, so much better once they just say he's stable. Yeah, and, and I've been asking. I've been asking. That, and so that's much. what we're waiting for. Okay. I mean, I feel like at the end, we're gonna get there. If he's not, that's a lot worse for me. And here comes the truth. We hear it right here. You know, again, she's very good. Why do they want his picture? You know, why do they want this? And then the very end, you know, I just feel better when he's stable because if he's not, that's a lot worse for me. Yeah. And for him. But if he's not, that's just a lot worse for everybody. Of course. <coughs> so, see, I... I so they've asked for an update, and I asked them for an update as well. So they're checking uh, to see what's going on. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I will do with myself if he's, well, if he's not okay. No matter I what. Mean, I mean, I, I clearly can't be together. No matter what happens, but, no matter where this falls, right, it's, it's out of our control. Right? You did what you could. Oh, so, you know, so, um, anyway. This, oh, this is not polite, is it? It doesn't matter. Okay. There's no etiquette, appropriate etiquette here. So again, with this right here, we see they're getting ready to break the news to her, right? And I don't know if this is authentically how it went down or if they're just prepping all this to be like, you know, here it is. But again, and you heard her try to save herself at the beginning. You know, if he doesn't make it, it's bad for everybody. You know, this is where I just, I, I, my argument for this would be her main concern is herself, right? And Christian is an afterthought. She knows she went over the edge. She knows she took his life and she knows it's bad. Um, but anyway, so this room is reported, okay? So let's just, I don't, I don't want to talk about, I mean, even if it is recording right now, what we talk about is confidential. They can never use it, but I prefer that we just not talk about, about right. the case. But just talking about in general, okay. no matter what his condition is, it's out of our control, right? We have no control. Mm -hmm. What's done is done. We can't do it. We need to move forward. And my concern is you, okay? Um, I will be talking, obviously, to your family. Um, like I said, I, I still feel, you know, confident that um, you're gonna you're going home. Tonight. I don't know about tonight, but you know, just because they're again, the investigation is ongoing. They can they can hold you technically for a while, um, and you know, I know your parents. So here's the reality of sinking into her a little bit of like, you know, I want to go home tonight. Again, that's, you know, of course anybody would, right? You know, but this is where it's sinking in more and more and more. And again, I just feel like they're edging up to finding this information that we're about to find out, which unfortunately at this point is that, you know, he did not make it. Uh, and the whole facade of like, look, you know, this is one thing that I always find interesting is, you know, here he is, he's talking to her. And he's like, you know, this is confidential. You know, they can't use this or whatever. Well, here it is. You know what I'm saying? It's all out there, right? Now, whether it can be used in the actual court system, like, you know, this part, whatever. You know, but nonetheless, the bell has been rung, okay? And so, uh, this to me is like when, when you get into picking juries and that kind of a thing, it can be difficult, right? For people who are not familiar with it. Now, one thing I do find interesting too is like, again, because this happened a minute ago, and so many things have happened between now and then, you know, obviously the local people of Miami will probably be more familiar with this, but it surprises me how many people don't know about this case. You know, and I was just like, like, wow, this is like, you know, a pretty big case when it blew up. But again, unfortunately, the state of the world is so many horrible things are happening on a daily basis, it gets buried. While they're conducting the investigation, they can hold you, okay? But listen, your dogs are fine. I'm on it. We're going to get you home as quickly as we can, all right? Um, I know, I am straightforward with you. There are some concerns about about your mental health to make sure that you're okay because this is very traumatic. So there may be some steps 
take in there. Yep, come on in. So here the whole part about the mental health, you know, they can hold you, they can do this, they can do that. Reality is sinking in for her and it's getting ready to nosedive for her. We have to inform you that Christian did not make it. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the doctors did what they could. And Christian is dead. Yes. Oh my God. This is not real right, okay? No, there's no fucking way. Kristen died? Okay. Can I please have a hug? Am I allowed to do that in here? Sure. Yeah. Relax. No, no, no. Okay. 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 Just take some breaths. You're gonna be okay. I I need I need to I need to hug my mom. I'll talk I'll talk to your parents about the movie. I cannot be left alone in like a room by myself. You won't be after this. I just like no, that's not true. That's not, that did not, that's not real, right? It is real. Christian did Christian is dead. Yes. Then I know why. I know, I just can't believe it. I'll talk to your parents. Your I'll get them, I'm going to get your parents your age. Can you imagine? Imagine getting that news when you had nothing to do with it, right? Like, or whatever. I mean, that gives me goosebumps. But the fact that now her worst nightmare has come true, right? She knows this is very bad for her. Um, I have no idea how I would react in this kind of situation. It almost makes me a little teary-eyed. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Um, for Obviously for him, right? Not her. Um, oh, my God. It's just... The, the poor guy but anyways so uh, you know let me get back on track here i mean it just it, it literally makes a hair on my arm stand so it's bad for her oh i can't be left alone oh i need a hug but then her the lawyer whoever he is gets up to hug her no i need my mom a very dependent codependent i would argue on the parents thing every little thing i need my mom i need my mom i need my dad which a lot of people are i get that i'm not trying to falter but it just seems like you know girl it's time to grow up a little bit you know what i'm saying like this is big girl stuff you're in right now right uh you killed your boyfriend this is not good so her world is shattering right now right probably not because she lost christian but because she's losing her own life in a sense we uh we spoke to your parents and they're trying to do everything possible to get here as soon as possible as well. To what? To get your parents for them to come over here. So they're doing everything possible right now to to find a way to get down here. I uh I've been crying so much, Don't and I just can't even cry right now. Again, these statements that she makes, right? That just don't look good. I've been crying so much I can't cry right now. I think it's because she's scared out of her mind, right? More than being sad about Christian, right? Um, she's in shock. Uh, and, and I mean, on multiple levels. Whether it's for the loss of Christian, whether it's because she knows she's in trouble, whatever. I mean, I personally would go into shock either way. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be at the hospital. I, if, if anything happened to him, I just wanted to be at the hospital. I begged, can I please go to the hospital? I mean, obviously, they put me in comes to my house. But, like, I begged, can I please go to the hospital? Oh, my God, friends. Our friends. Oh, my God. Here, I would say we're into the completely freaking out stage. Mom. Me? I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be the same thing. What did I say into that other room? I said, God forbid, 
God forbid, when like from far away, if if it, if what if what if I what if it had actually hit a little bit lower and he died? That's what I said. You remember? I said God forbid. Then a few minutes later, we can't we can't change what what's occurred and get him before. So just step by step. I think she's still trying to form an argument of unintentional. You know, she wanted to know she didn't want him to be dead. And I don't think she started off her morning with that, right? I really don't think that. But someone with this kind of volatile anger, I mean, my God. I swear I was holding him for so effing long. And I, the security lady was standing right there. And I was like, why are they taking so effing long? And I was just sitting there just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And uh, I do have another question. Um, damn, that's not fair for his mom to and see him. Um, and his birthday is in eight days. Who has been called for him? Nobody has yet yet. We're still trying to find his, his uh, family's information. Do you have a contact number for them? Maybe it's in your phone? It might be recorded. His, his phone? You know his password, right? Definitely. I do know his password, yes. What's his password? You know, it might be easier for us to get in there. And, you know, password is 0412. So his birthday is in eight days. Again, she's still trying to form this argument. You know, I said, what's taking so effing long? What's taking so effing long? And she, it's very important to her to prove that unintentional, you know, which I mean, anybody would, I guess, but it just always kind of interests me how the perpetrators go about trying to prove this right. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's just like, well, I mean, my God, this poor guy, you know, died his last visions, right, are of this woman who, you know, took his life. Okay. Well, um, we'll give you guys a minute. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate let, it. Let us know if you need anything else. Is there anything going to take you now? You want, I mean, is there any, the water enough? Would you like or something else to drink with the soda instead or something to eat? We need to be good. Um, actually, you know what? I think it'll be good for a while. <laughs> you right okay. Okay. What I really need is a hit of vape, badly. I'm deeply addicted to it, and uh, it's for stress. Yeah, she needs that vape, and I probably would too at this time. Now, at least she's like, oh, I'm going to be here for a while. And, you know, the whole nine yards, it's, it's the reality is starting to sink in, right? Of, you know, like, this is what's going on here. Um, and so, yeah. Again, my whole thing with the entire situation is that, you know, whether whatever took place in the moment here you know i think that the evidence shows that this was again not some plotted out first degree type thing and obviously they're not trying to charge her with that right but nonetheless at the end of the day someone has lost their life this sounds very avoidable this sounds like it was a moment of rage and it sounds like this was she had moments of rage a lot over little things you know and that this time it ended up going over the line and costing him his life it will be very interesting from a legal standpoint when and if this goes to trial to see what impact this interrogation has on the actual case on her defense on the state all that kind of stuff because i don't think she did herself any favors in this 
at all. I think she was very transparent. I think her main concern was herself and was going home. And I think that that just shined through on this. My heart goes out to Christian, his life, his family, those who, friends, family, all those people who care deeply about him and no longer have him in their lives. Now, if you are still watching, I greatly appreciate it. And be sure to check out the next video that's popping up now.